Praise the Lord. It's good to be back in the Church of God here on Wednesday night. Just exciting to uh, come before the Lord with praise and with thanksgiving. I hope uh, all of you are doing well, just watching and viewing all of your uh, trust in the Lord. God's been good to you this week. God's ministered in your life, touched you in a mighty way, and just blessed you beyond comparison. Just so good. I appreciate all that you do. Make sure uh, right now if you're watching, if you'll just uh, uh, if you'll share this with someone, that uh, help other people to be getting online and watching and viewing. I appreciate everybody that will, you know, uh, comment. If you have a comment, please comment. If you, if you like us, please like us and uh, uh, let us know. And just uh, We just want to be a blessing to everyone and reach out to those around. Just, uh, just good, to, good to do that. Uh, just to uh, we get started, just a couple of announcements. Sunday morning we'll be back in here for morning worship at 11 o'clock. Uh, all of you uh, that will, you're welcome to come. We do have uh, social distancing in place. We've got uh, pews, every other pew's roped off. Uh, we have some masks, uh, some gloves if people want them. Uh, the door knobs, door handles, everything will be wiped down and clean, sanitized before Sunday. So uh, uh, you won't have to worry about a thing. Uh, feel free to come if you'd like to. Uh, if not, hopefully you'll, you'll watch uh, Sunday morning. But 11 o'clock will be uh, in the house and we'll be live streaming and then. Uh, Sunday night will be conference call again, and next Wednesday we'll, we'll be live streaming again next Wednesday. Hoping to uh, get back up and at them uh, soon, just uh, just continue to be cautious, and we'll open up, uh, we'll open up very soon, very soon uh, we'll be uh, opening up. So it's good to have you uh, uh, with us tonight, good to see you, appreciate you uh, watching and viewing and, and listening tonight to what God's going to do, listening to how... God is going to reach down to it. So good to be here. We're going to in prayer take needs of our church to the Lord in prayer. Uh, let's remember our lost loved ones that they'll be saved before it's too late. Also our children. God will bless our children, all the children of the church, and also our children everywhere. God will move and minister, touch their life. Let's also remember Brother Tim uh, tonight. The Lord will touch him, Lord will bless him, uh, and, and God will strengthen him and minister in his life. Also, let's keep Sister Pam in prayer. The Lord will touch her. Bless Miss Pam and Miss Life. Also keep Brenda in prayer. Talked to her last night. She had failed. Uh, let's please remember Sister uh, Brenda. She's uh, she's doing okay, but uh, keep Brenda in prayer. Also Miss Mary, Lord, touch her. Also let's keep Tony Gregory in prayer. Lord, the minister and uh, his uh, need and his situation. Just bless him mighty way. Also let's keep uh, um, uh, Brother Dominique, our neighbor, in prayer. Lord, keep strengthening him and touching him. Bless him, Brother Dominique. Also. Uh, just uh, everyone uh, around our church, associated with our church. Let's also keep Sam, uh, one, of our, uh, one of our people, uh, Sam um, and Marsha's family in prayer. Sam's uh, uh, out of town for a job. Let's keep him in prayer for traveling mercy. Lord, keep his hand upon him. Keep him saved. And also Marsha's family, Lord, touch, Lord, touch. Miss Lila, keep her saved. Also, let's keep Deacon's dad, Troy, in prayer. Lord, the minister of move. We need to keep our country in prayer. The Lord needs to intervene. The Lord needs to touch and bless in our country and our 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 communities, our neighborhoods. Uh, once again, uh, people need to turn their eyes upon God, need to turn uh, their hearts back to God and let God minister in their lives. So let's keep our country in prayer, Lord, and minister. All our frontline workers, our, uh, our doctors, our nurses, uh, our teachers, our uh, law enforcement, military personnel, all the ones on the front line, keep them in prayer. God will touch, God will bless, and also keep uh, uh, this uh, virus uh, this virus in prayer, the Lord will take it and Discard of it and go away and just you won't have to worry about it uh, any longer. Just keep keep that in prayer. Give our political figures in prayer. Lord will touch, Lord will reach down and, and minister and, and, and also uh, our communities with, uh, with rioting and different things that's taking place across our country. Let's keep that in prayer. Lord will just touch their lives and touch people's hearts and we'll all be in unity and uh, all be in one accord uh, for the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm sure each one of you have a need. The Lord is all, already all about it. Uh, they uh, need, to, need to remember uh, because we all have them. We have situations, we have mountains and valleys and circumstances that we can't control, things that we can't do, things that we can't uh, handle that uh, we need God to do that for us and God to take care of them. And all, if we're going to come to Him, He says, that those all that will come, we'll come to Him, we can rest uh, in Him and rest and be uh, steadfastly assured that God's going to take care of our problems, our needs. In our situation. So we're going to pray for one another and we're going to pray for all these needs tonight. Hallelujah. Have I missed any uh, prayer requests tonight? Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight.
tonight, love you, praise you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for allowing us to be in your house tonight, Lord, to bring this live stream. Lord, we thank you for what you've done. Lord, I, I pray that you'll soon help us to get back to the church full today. Instead of one Sunday night, Wednesday night, Lord, but we're using wisdom and, and, and knowledge and understanding, Lord, just trying to be cautious and trying to be careful, Lord, because we don't want anyone getting sick. But God, we ask you to move and minister within our life. Lord, touch it in a mighty way. Help us to get back up and out. Lord, touch all our local pastors and local churches. Bless them in a mighty way. Lord, reach down and touch all the ones watching and viewing, all the ones that are here this uh, after tonight. Lord, just, just reach down and touch everybody that turns on this channel, that shares this channel. Lord, reach down and bless them and touch them. Touch their need. <clears throat> touch their mouth and move it out of the way. Lord, touch their valley, their circumstances, their situation. Move and minister in our life. Go mighty word. Lord, reach down and touch our lost loved ones. They'll be saved before it's ever lasted too late. Minister in their hearts and their homes. Touch our children, God. Move and minister in our children's lives. Our children of the church, Lord, and all our children around this country. Bless them and touch them. Minister in their lives. Touch them in a mighty way. Lord, I ask you to touch uh, uh, Troy, uh, little Tiggins' dad. Lord, reach down and touch him and give him speed recovery. Touch his back in a mighty way. Touch Brother Tim. Lord, reach down and strengthen him. Help him be out of the hospital. And, Lord, just be back up and out. Lord, do it well. Lord, give him speed of recovery. Touch Sister Brenda. Lord, help her feel better. Not have any pain. God, move in her life. Touch her in a mighty way. Touch Mr. Barry. Reach out and touch her in a mighty way. Reach out and bless him that day. Touch uh, uh, Brother Dominique. Lord, reach out and touch him in a mighty way. Strengthen Brother Dominique. Reach out and minister in his life. Touch him in a mighty way. Lord, I ask you, Lord, I failed to mention, Lord, I ask you to touch uh, uh, Beth, baby, Sydney. Lord, touch little Sydney. Reach out and touch him in a mighty way. Reach out and bless that little child. Lord, reach out and minister in that need, in that situation. Help her feel better. Do a mighty work in that need, in that situation. Lord, reach out and bless. Touch uh, uh, Marsha and Sam's family, Lord, keep them safe. Watch them touch your Sam as he's traveling for his work. Lord, I ask you to keep your hand of mercy upon him. And Lord, continue to touch him. Lord, Miss Lila, Lord, keep your hand of mercy upon her as she's traveling, going uh, going to stay with relatives, Lord, and different things. Lord, I ask you to bless her in a mighty way. Move and minister these needs. Touch Miss Pam tonight. Reach down and bless her. All the needs and every situation she might have, or whatever desire her heart is, Lord, give it to her tonight. Bless her in a mighty way. Minister and move in her need. Lord, touch our political figures across this land, across this world. Touch our political figures, minister in our life, Lord. Touch our country, Lord, all those uh, towns and, and, and states that's rioting and stuff. Touch these people, Lord, help people to get back to one accord, being in unity, Lord, loving and praying. Uh, the main thing is people need to get away from sin and start serving you once again, accept you into their life, Lord, because sin takes people farther than they want to go, keeps them longer than they want to stay. God, I ask you to bless them. And, Lord, touch our, our frontline workers, military, EMS, uh, fire departments, uh, law enforcement, all the teachers and nurses. And everyone involved with frontline workers, our stores, the, uh, the stores that are open, Lord, touch all these people that are in the front line of this virus, Lord, touch them in the mighty way. Take away this virus, Lord, help this virus to go away, and Lord, and we don't have to worry about it anymore. God, I ask you to move and minister in their life. Lord, touch during the worship time tonight. Touch every life, every heart. Help every word that comes out of my mouth tonight, Lord, to be straight from heaven and have the conviction, fire the Holy Ghost upon those words. And Lord, you just begin to strengthen and begin to draw people to you through these words, Lord, and then go out, Lord, because these words, hallelujah, go out, and they're not null and void, but Lord, they go out, and Lord, I want your word to go out, hallelujah, it's sharper than any two-edged sword, Lord, I know that it's cut and going and coming, God, we need that, we need to grow, we need to go forth for your glory and name, say, God, I ask you to move in the mighty way, touch every life, touch every heart, touch every situation, in Jesus, holy, wonderful name we pray, amen. Get your Bibles tonight and start the place, Matthew 24. Matthew 24, beginning verse 32. Matthew 24 and 32. Now learn a parable of the key, of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves, you know that summer is not. So likewise, ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the door. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angel of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered to the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Lord, I come before you one more time, Lord, ask you a Lord message, and Lord Messenger, Lord, move it right away. Let your Lord flow, Lord, touch tonight, touch every life, every heart. Do a mighty word. We love you. We praise you. We thank you. Give glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to talk about a love letter tonight. A love letter that, that God wrote the whole world, wrote for everybody. And as we 
Look at this. We understand Jesus is talking. It's written and read in my Bible. It should be in your Bible, the words of Jesus. And he's talking to the disciples. He's talking about the fig tree. He's talking about the summer drawing out. He's talking about the, uh, the day when Jesus would, uh, when he would return back, when he would come. And he's talking about uh, the time that, that would draw nigh. And he says, you know, during this time, you know, you look around and you see all these things taking place. And it's uh, uh, things that are happening just like in the days of Noah before the flood. You see, they were eating and drinking and being merry and doing the things that they wanted to do. And they weren't worried about the coming of the Lord. They weren't concerned with the coming of the Lord. They weren't concerned with what uh, what was going to take place. And so uh, when the flood came, when, when Noah tried to tell them, and as he was going to the ark, no doubt he witnessed and no doubt he told everyone and tried to let him know a flood was coming. But because there hadn't been a flood, because there hadn't been rain, because nobody uh, cared what Noah was saying, nobody understood or thought about what Noah was saying, they continued to eat and drink and be merry. And I tender to you, in today's time, that's what's going on. No one uh, or many people don't care about what the preacher says or what the, the convert says or what the Christian says because people are living out here in the highways and the hedges. Uh, doing what they want to do, living their life. That's why we have so much turmoil in the world today is because people are allowing sin to take over their life, sin to control their life, and that sin in their life will keep them from a place called heaven. That sin in their life will allow them to uh, be held back and stay back when Jesus returns. And I don't want to get ahead of myself. We'll talk some more about the return of the Lord, but I want you to understand uh, tonight we're talking about the Word of God as a, as a love letter or an eternal love letter, one that will last for eternity. You see, the words of God will stand. They will stand. Verily I say to you, this generation shall not pass till all these things will be filled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. What God has written and has uh, ordained men uh, to write in this Word of God, hallelujah, will not pass away. The Word will last forever. It's eternal. I, I, I know all of you uh, remember maybe when you was uh, dating your spouse or uh, or something of like that nature. I remember when I was dating my wife, Sheila, dating her, uh, my spouse, and, and the first lady, Sheila, I was dating her. And uh, we would, uh, you know, as young, young teenagers, you would write these love letters and you would write to, uh, you know, write to each other and and you would tell, you know, how, how, how you love them and how beautiful they were and things of that nature. And I know it seems uh, uh, childish or nowadays, but I, I remember the time when doing that, and that was good because just a simple note of I love you or just a simple letter of I'm thinking of you today or I care about you, uh, that, that you write and that you let them know that you're thinking about them. That, that's good. That, that's good. And, I, and there was a song uh, back uh, and that, that most of you have, uh, have heard it, you know, maybe some of you that are more holier than I, uh, maybe maybe we'll, we'll, we'll proud of this. But there's a there's a there's a song that uh, uh, that I used to listen to uh, uh, before I got saved, and I would even listen to it now. You know, if it came on a, a on the radio. But there was a song about love, about a check yes or no, about about two kids uh, uh, in school, and this boy uh, would write this uh, young girl a, a letter, and, and it would uh, and you know how we would have the box, and you'd have the or the circle, and and, and you know will, will you be my uh, if you if you're a girl, you know you'd ask the boy, will you be my boyfriend or if you're the guy? You ask the girl, hey, will you be my girlfriend? Check yes or no, and you check yes or no. Now I know none of you have ever done that. But I, uh, I understand and I see where those things happen because uh, uh, and think, and people uh, do that and because they when they when they uh, someone catches their eye they they might not know what to say or how to say it so it's easier uh, to put it in writing sometimes than to speak it verbally and so uh, I want you to understand about a, a love letter is something that uh, people do and people write to others but you know a physical love letter that we have maybe you wrote your spouse or your boyfriend or girlfriend, uh, if, you, if you're not married or whatever, and, and you wrote them, and, and sometimes through time, through years of life, sometimes those get discarded, or sometimes they get uh, destroyed, or, or maybe lost, and, and you don't know uh, where they're at, or sometimes maybe you don't even care where they're at, and, and so those things that are, that, are, that are like that, that are given to you, uh, sometimes you, you know they're, they're misplaced, and, and you go on with life, and you forget about it, but you see this this word of God is not going to be misplaced. It's always going to be standing out there. Now, they, there may be a time when the when the physical word of God, they may uh, try to arrest people for preaching the gospel or reading the gospel out in the open. But the word of God that you understand, that you read, that you study, that's
That's why we're studying to show ourselves approved word and work, not to be ashamed of the gospel. That's why we study so it'll be in our hearts and in our minds. We'll have it all wrote down here. Maybe not word for word. Hallelujah. But you'll, you'll be able to remember a lot of the word of God. They took the physical Bible away today. Would you be able to remember the words of God that you could survive, that you could keep going and you could be that testimony, that witness? Would you remember? Uh, would you have been studying enough? Would you have, would you have learned enough and thought about it enough and listened to the preacher and the teacher and during your prayer time uh, study uh, with God or pray with God enough that you would know the words uh, of God, that you'd be able to say something to encourage somebody if the physical word of God was taken from you? But you because you see, that love letter that he gave us is for eternity. That love letter that he wrote and that we have physically, we have it in our hearts today. Hallelujah, it'll last for eternity because the soul, uh, the soul that is going to live somewhere forever, whether in a place called heaven or a place called hell, it's up to you. It's your choice. Hallelujah, I can't make you choose uh, right. I can't make you choose wrong. It's up to you. Hallelujah, but as far as, far as me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Hallelujah, like Joshua said. We're going to serve the Lord. You see, as we look at this, as we understand this love letter, it's called the Holy Word, the Holy Word of God. It's holy, and it'll bless you, and it'll touch you. And I want to, I want to share with you three things uh, tonight, or three places, three avenues that that He gave us this whole, this Word of God. Uh, there's three areas, and you can, we can go from the front of the Word of God to the back of the Word of God. And these three areas I'm going to talk about tonight will cover pretty much all of that. And if you can remember these things, you can help lead somebody to Christ. You can help lead somebody to know uh, Jesus as a personal Savior, be a witness, and be a testimony. First of all, I want to talk about in the beginning, Genesis 1 and 31, and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. You see, God had already formed light. There was, there was nothing. There was no and void. There was nothing uh, going on. There was just a, a space out there, and God began to form light. He had already formed heaven and earth, and, and, and you know, that was going to be there. He had already formed the sun, the moon, the stars. He had, he, he had already created the animals, the fowls, the whales, the cattle. He had already created these things, and then he got to man. He got to creating human beings. He got to man. He started uh, making man, and, and he made man in their image. Let me tell you, Hallelujah! He made man in their image. You say, preacher, who's there? There is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah! There was all three there, all three trying to God in. For those that don't believe, Hallelujah! And that, that God is three persons in one, the Trinity of God. There's something wrong because right there in the beginning, right there in the very beginning of the Word of God, it says there in their image. Hallelujah! You know why? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost got together and said, let's create man in our image. And then after our likeness, what we, what we are like and in our image, hallelujah. And we're going to allow man to have dominion over all the animals and all the creatures of the world. And we're going to bless them and, and help them to be fruitful. And that's what man was taught to do, to be blessed, to be fruitful. And man was created, human beings were created that time from the dust of the ground. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, their image, you see, hallelujah, across this land, we need to get back to a place of unity. I don't like to talk uh, many times uh, during messages about, about uh, things going on uh, uh, as far as a lot in the news and things, but if people would get back to the place of unity, uh, because we're all created equal. We're all created in the eyes of God. Hallelujah. There's good people and there's bad people, but we're all created in, in the image and in the likeness of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. We're created. Hallelujah. And when he looked down and created man, and created me, and created you, and created this one over here, and that person over there, and that person back there, and that person back there, and that person over here, that person over here, and we're, no matter where you're at, God created them. Hallelujah. It wasn't a scientist. It wasn't a human being. It was God that created. Hallelujah. And allowed us to be born. Hallelujah. And come and be alive on the face of the earth. You see, we were made. Hallelujah. In their image. And I like that. Hallelujah. You see, when I was out in the world, uh, and not, not a Christian, I wasn't doing anything to, uh, very good to uh, help their image any or help uh, them look, uh, look good. But God was good all the time. I was the one that faltered and went astray and went away from God. But thank God, hallelujah, when I came back to know Him, hallelujah, I'd like to thank that I can testify and I can witness and I can preach and teach and tell people about Jesus and I can, and I can share their image, hallelujah, because I want to be more and more like Christ. I want to live for Him and be that life, be that testimony, show love and compassion and mercy to people. Let people see God in my life. Hallelujah. But you see,
see after man was made in their image, after man was uh, created in their likeness and having a dominion over the, 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 the beast and the animals and, and were blessed and being fruitful. It didn't take long before man would cause problems and allow sin and a curse to come upon the people. But you see, throughout the Old Testament, we see through the Word of God, and we even see in the New Testament, hallelujah, how he explains and how we're explained and told that wrong was punished and good was rewarded. Wrong or bad or evil was punished. Good was rewarded. You see, that's a lot of the problem in today's time. We want to reward bad things. We want to reward, hallelujah, Lord help me tonight. We want to reward that bad behavior in today's time. And that's not what we do. We've got to punish bad behavior. We've got to uh, uh, punish wrongdoing. We've got to punish those that do wrong. I'm talking about discipline. I'm talking about I'm talking about sharing with people that wrong causes punishment, causes destruction, but good is what we reward. Good is, is when you reward somebody. You see, this is just a good example. You know, when uh, when, 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 when Grandma uh, has the cookie jar and you get caught with your hand in the cookie jar and, and Grandma as I told you, don't eat that cookie before uh, supper. You know what you do? You don't get that cookie, but when you're caught in the cookie jar you get a little pop on the hand or a pop on the rear end area, right? And so you understand uh, that you uh, uh, that you can't have that, so you're punished, you don't get it. But for those that wait till after supper and say, Granny, uh, can I have a cookie now? You know what Grandma does? Grandma comes over and gives you maybe one or maybe one uh, one extra for your trouble, so double for your trouble because you listen. So I want, I want you to understand tonight that we've got to get back to a place that there is a right and there is a wrong. There's not, <coughs> excuse me, there's not a there's not a gray line. It's either right or it's wrong. There, it's either good or it's bad. It's either uh, evil or it's godly. It's righteous or unrighteous. There's there's no in between. And and, and we we've got to make our minds up. We've got to understand: Are we going to do right or are we going to do wrong? And we see and we look through history and we look through the Old Testament. We understand how sin uh, crept into the world and man uh, became uh, became uh, born into sin through that. And we see sin from prevalent, sin prevalent throughout the Old Testament, people being destroyed because of sin. You know, sin was in the camp, uh, you know, when uh, when, <clears throat> when Aiden was told, you know, hey, we're going to go in there and destroy the land, but don't take anything. Uh, we see where he stole, he took something and didn't give it to God, and so they found they had to destroy him and his family <clears throat> because because he did wrong, he'd been disobedient, he'd done wrong, so he had to be destroyed because of the wrong do, because sin was in the camp. You see, when sin's in the camp, then there's going to have to be some punishment. You see, and nowadays, in the time we live, oh, hallelujah, I'm feeling good tonight. You better pray for me, church. Hallelujah. Uh, you see, uh, people's got to where they, where they don't know, want to classify sin as sin anymore. We're going to say, oh, they just did a little, 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 little white lie, or they just did this, or, or it'll be all right. No. If it's a sin, it needs to be under the blood. If it's wrong, it needs to be forgiven. Hallelujah by God. God's a forgiver. Hallelujah. He said he would, if we fail or falter or sin, he'll, he'll, he'll reach down and he'll touch us. He'll cleanse us from all unrighteousness and forgive us for all our sins. And cleanse us from all unrighteousness and take care of our troubles and take care of our problems that we have with self. Because, you know, we're, we're not perfect. But you know what? We've got to call sin what it is. Hallelujah. We've got to call it uh, as bad. We've got to call sin as evil. And so, as we look throughout the Old Testament, when sin or when bad was, 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 was done, then there was destruction that was going to come. God did not play with uh, sin. God did not play with sinful people. He allowed people to come back to Him. He allowed people to change their ways, but He did not play with them. He was serious because God, the Creator, wants people to follow after Him and do his, and do what He would have them to do. And so, uh, people were, were not allowed to play games. And He, he wasn't just going to let them get by. So, He was not the people of the Old Testament get by with sin. Why do we think in 2020 that God's going to let us get by with sin in 2020? <laughs> Why do we think that we can go along and get along and do what we want to do and think everything's okay when back in the Old Testament they still had to repent, they still had to change. Israel had to do it multiple times. They had to, they had to 
they got uh, saved out of Egypt because God uh, heard their cries and sent Moses in to deliver them out of Egypt. And as Israel came out, they started backbiting and sinning and talking against God and wandering in the wilderness 40 years. And then God forgave them again. You know what? If he wouldn't let them get by with that then and wouldn't let those go into the promised land of Canaan uh, because of what they had done, because of wandering around and doing what they wanted to do and living like they wanted to live. If he wouldn't let them go into the promised land like that, how do we think we're going to get to heaven and we're doing wrong across this land and across this nation and allow sin to be rampant in our lives and be rampant around our, our, our houses of worship across this world? You know what? It's time the church, hallelujah, mount up and be the church. It's time the church, hallelujah, go forth and do what God would have the church do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second. In the beginning, second, when man would need a sacrifice. John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have an everlasting life. For God sent not a son to the world to condemn the world, that the world through him might be saved. You see, man tried all they could do to change outcomes. Man tried all they could do to be able to, 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 to be that sacrifice, or to be, they would offer bullets and rams. They would offer all types of sacrifices that all the priests would have to go in. They would offer these for the, for the at certain times of the year, would offer the, the repentance or offer this for a sin sacrifice at, certain, at different times of the year. And, and they, would, they, they would have to go for the people. And, 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 you know, people, the priest even started doing wrong. And people started doing wrong. And, and it just wasn't working. And there, there, needed, to be, uh, there needed to be someone or, or something to be that, that sacrifice. And it had to be uh, someone that was without sin, someone that was uh, uh, spotless and without blemish and without spot. That's why they, uh, when, they, when they offered a sacrifice, they had to get the lamb or the bullet or the, or the, or the ram. They had to get the one that was, that was right, that was fitting for that, the right size, the right. And it couldn't be one that was out here uh, sickly or, or hadn't eaten in a while and was nothing but skin and bone. They couldn't get uh, the one that was just about to die anyway and, and go ahead and take that as a sacrifice because God wouldn't accept it. It had to be the best. Uh, the best of the best. You know, just like we have to be the best of the best for God. We've got to give our best. Hallelujah. So many times we want to give half best. We want to give leftovers. But God's looking for our best. He's looking for us to do the best we can for His glory and His namesake. And, and we look, they, they, they tried their best to, to give the sacrifice, but it wasn't good enough. It wouldn't wash away the sins of every life because people kept on and kept on. So uh, one day, uh, God, the Father, sent His only begotten Son to this earth. He was born, and we celebrated at Christmas time, born in, in, in a town called Bethlehem. And He was laid in a manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes. We sing about it, we talk about it, we do Christmas programs about it. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, He came down to, to knowing that He was going to be that sinless sacrifice, that one without blame, without spot, blemish, or wrinkle, was going to be that sacrifice one day. And so, as we look and as we understand, uh, uh, this, this, this letter, this word of God, that lasts forever shows to what extreme God would go for you and what extreme God would go for me. He would send His only begotten Son to give His life one day for the whole world, not just for David Shankle, not just for you, but for the whole world, for everybody in this world, Jesus Christ was sent by God the Father so they could be saved. Not, not so they would be condemned, but so they could all come to Him. That, that people could be saved through Jesus Christ. He was the saving grace. He was the saving mercy. Hallelujah. You see, God, uh, God went through this because He loved man so much. You know why? Because in the beginning, uh, God created the, the men uh, after His likeness, after in their image. He created man. And His creation had decided to go on a tangent or go on their own and do what they wanted to. And God said, I've got to, I've got to show them my love and compassion. So God so loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. Hallelujah. Without a Savior, we would be lost and on our way to hell. Without a Savior, hallelujah, or being a, 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 being a being to Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords being sent for us, we would still be, man would still be under the curse of sin. But because of Jesus, hallelujah, because of Jesus, we're not under that curse anymore. We don't have to stay wrapped up jelly-tight in sin. We don't have to stay wrapped up in the sins of the world. 
We can live separate and set apart. We can live right. Hallelujah. You know what? Contrary to what, what people might say, what people might believe, you don't have to. Let me say this again. You do not have to sin every day. You do not have to. You can make a choice to sin every day, or you can make a choice to live righteous and live holy. And if you do sin, it's faithful just for giving cleansing from all unrighteousness. But you don't have to. Hallelujah. Because you, because you know it, and I know it, when we sin. Hallelujah. That would not be a just God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Try not to get on another message. But that, that would not be a just God if we if, if we sinned and didn't know what we had done and weren't forgiven for it. We have to know what we've done so we can be forgiven. Hallelujah. Because no sin is going to inherit the kingdom of God. And God's not going to offer us something that He don't give us the opportunity that we can make it. So you know what? He gives you and He gives me the opportunity. Hallelujah. That we can live right. We can live righteous and live holy. Hallelujah. Because He sent His Son. That was that sacrifice. If, if Jesus Christ's sacrifice on Calvary was not enough for you and I to be saved, then, then, then there's a problem. Hallelujah. He was more than enough for you and I to be saved. Hallelujah. God loving us so much that He gave His only begotten Son. That, that, that should draw us to Him and let, and let us know, hey, we need to be serving Christ. We need to be living for Christ. As I said earlier, that's why so much uh, meanness and mischief is going on in the world because people are not serving Christ. They're choosing sin. They're choosing things of this world. They're choosing uh, to do what this world wants them to do. And I'm telling you today, hallelujah, we've got to be what God's called us to be. God wrote this down, hallelujah, so we would have an opportunity. We would have an opportunity. I like opportunities. Hallelujah. I remember when I got my first job at 16. I thought I was somebody. If you're from around here, you remember what I'm talking about. Harvard Steak and Fish House on Steakhouse Road off Old Salisbury Road. I went there one day and talked to Mr. Johnny B, a good man. Talked to Johnny B and told him I, I'd like to have a job and if he'd give me an opportunity. But he gave me the job and I started out as a busboy cleaning tables. And then I ended up doing the dishwashing and things like that. That's my first job at 16. I thought I was somebody. I didn't make much money. But I, but I had my first job. I, I could buy me a little gas for my car. And, and I was out there trying to work. I've worked all my life. And, 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 and tried my best to, to, to move on. And I, but, I, but I remember. I remember him giving me an opportunity. And I always tried to do the best job I could do for him. I always tried to do the best job. And I always I worked hard for him. And I was given an opportunity. you know. And, and through from then to, to, to my employment today uh, in, in jobs and careers and at different places. People gave me an opportunity and every time I was given an opportunity I tried my best to do my very best job that I could do for them because I was given an opportunity. They didn't have to give me an opportunity to hire me. Mr. Johnny B didn't have to hire me. He didn't have to give me a job. Somebody else could have got the job but he chose. He, he, saw, he saw hey, this is somebody that, that, that wants a job and will give him a chance. And you know what? Because he gave me a chance I, I was able to start my work ethic and would be able to work there and then move on to different jobs from then on. And I, you know, I thank God for that because it started me out and gave me a work ethic that I would go do the very best of good simply because somebody gave me an opportunity. Well, I'll bring it home. Hallelujah. When I was first, uh, when I first got saved, it was a Christian. Me and, uh, me and the first lady, Sheila, we was, when we was going to uh, East Alabama Church of God, that's where we were at. We were members until I got a pastor. But we were members there, and we and, and Pastor Harry, he would uh, he saw something in me. I, I don't know what, but he allowed us to, to be working over the youth. Uh, we had children church, and, and then uh, and then be over and being over the youth, and then uh, allow me to teach and, and, and Sunday school for the under fifty class, and then over fifty class. I mentioned this the other week, but about the, about the over fifty, you know. And but he saw something in me, gave me opportunity, and you know what? Every time that I studied, every time I prayed, every time I talked to God, every time I read the Bible, I. I was thankful. I was. I, I had the opportunity to to do good, and I tried my very best to do the very best job I could do at that. You know, I had an opportunity. Somebody gave me a chance, and you know what? That's what God does for every man. He gives us a chance, and every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, He gives us a chance that we can live right, that we can live for Him, and we can go to a place called heaven one day because He gave His only begotten Son. He, he gave us a chance. He wrote that in His love letter. He said, hey, I've given you my all. I've given you everything I can give you. I have nothing more that I can give you that will change you. That will you. See, the angels could come down and forgive you and cleanse your heart and make it white as snow. Uh, he didn't know that else could have done it. The only, the only one that did it was Jesus Christ. His blood on Calvary it was what that can come into your life and wash away your sins. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can 
make me whole again. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. You see, it takes the blood being applied. And so when, when you have that opportunity and you have uh, that, that uh, opportunity or that choice that you can make, we need to be making that choice and that decision to let Jesus be Lord of our life. Let Jesus be first of our life. Let Jesus be in control of everything that we do because God loved us so much. Hallelujah. You see, he gave us it. You see, God did not have to leave us the word of God. So we have a roadmap, but he did. A roadmap, direction, the blueprint on how we can live. He gave us example after example after example of what would happen if we did wrong, what would happen if we did good. He gave us example after example of people that were, uh, were in storms of life, people that were facing giants of life, people that were facing uh, uh, sicknesses of life, people that were facing all types of turmoil and situations and all types of circumstances. He gave us an opportunity to see those examples and know that God will provide it. God will bring us through that. God will make a way where there is no way. Hallelujah. If we need a way in the wilderness, he'll make a way. If we need a way in the desert, he'll make a way. If we need a way out of, out of there, hallelujah, he'll make a way of escape for you and I so we can go forth and do his will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God wrote it down so we have an opportunity, an opportunity to choose him, an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. The greatest happening in my life. I, 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 Sheila and I have three children. Megan, Tanner, and Colton. We have three children. And that was that was a great opportunity. Great, great times of our life was when they were born. That was precious moments when they were born. It was precious moments when, when Sheila and I were married. Just precious moments. Great. It was great moments when, when we got our first pastor. And then when we came here uh, to pastor, great moments, great time. I, I, I would take nothing for them. But the greatest happening in my life was when I accepted Jesus Christ as Lord of my life, as Lord of all. That was the greatest happening in my life because things have, have, have been nothing but great. I'm, talking about, I'm not talking about I hadn't had any troubles or trials, hadn't had any storms of life, and things haven't went bad. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the things in my life have been great because Jesus has been there to help me through those struggles. And through those trials and through those situations, that's what I'm talking about. Jesus has been with me. Hallelujah. Ever since I accepted him. And I thank God for that. Hallelujah. I thank God that he showed me love and compassion when he wrapped his loving arms around me and he saved me. Hallelujah. I thank God for that. I thank God for that saving grace, that saving mercy. Hallelujah. Thirdly, the promise returned. Beginning, Jesus being the sacrifice and the promise return. Revelation 22, 12, and 13. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I am out and Omega, beginning and the end, the first and the last. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords, the Son of the living God, our Messiah, did the ultimate sacrifice, which was his life, which was him, gave the ultimate sacrifice, gave his life on Calvary, died, was buried in a borrowed tomb, rose again that third glorious day, then hung around, talked to the disciples, blessed the disciples, ministered to the disciples, witnessed to the disciples, and then he ascended into the air and went away. But before he went away before that time. He promised he would return. The promise that he would come back and that if he went away to prepare a place, he was coming back and we could be where he is. That we could go there. He promised he was coming back. He promised he was going to the Father. And he promised he was going to send the Father. And he promised he was coming back one day. And as the, as the disciples, as they witnessed Jesus ascend in the air, hallelujah, they, they were asked, why stand you here gazing? This same Jesus that you see go away is going to come in like manner. It's paraphrased. It's going to come in like manner. This same Jesus that went away will come again. They were told that. You see, when we look in Revelations and when we look at other chapters of the New Testament, we see, and the chapter that I read tonight, we see and we understand that Jesus is coming back. That Jesus is coming back soon. That Jesus, the Son of God, the Messiah, King of Kings, the one that that it has all power given in heaven and earth. He has that power. But in verse 36 tonight I read, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, know not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. As the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man 
briefly, <clears throat> we're told, it's preached on, it's sung about the return of Jesus. I read it to you. You've heard it from me, but you've heard it from other people, other preachers. You've heard it in other songs about Jesus coming again. Many people out here in this world, most people in this world have heard about Jesus coming again. But we look around and we see many people are not worried about his coming or his appearing. Many people are doing, as I said earlier at the beginning of the message, <clears throat> doing as the days of gold were. They're not worried about Jesus coming. They're not thinking about Jesus coming. They're doing their own thing. But you see, the thing is, they don't realize that when Jesus comes back and takes the church home, they're going to be left. And at some point after they're left behind, the Spirit of God is going to be drawn from this earth. And people are going to be running around, wanting, the Word of God tells us, wanting to die, but can't. Wanting things to get better, but it can't. Because it's there during the tribulation, the bad times of tribulation, during, during that, it's going to be hard. It's going to be tough to be a Christian. You know, many people say, well, I'll, I'll sow my wild ropes and I'll wait and I'll get saved one day. Well, that one day may never come because when the Lord returns and takes the church home, it's going to get harder and harder and harder to serve God. And when the Spirit of God is taken away and people are, uh, people are, are, are wanting to be saved, but they have to see loved ones or different ones maybe be beheaded other horrible things happen, famine, different things happening if they don't take the mark of the beast. It's going to be hard for them to say, well, I'm going to serve Jesus and be martyred for Jesus. It's going to be harder for them then than it is now when it's free. So I'm not one of those that say, well, nobody at that time is going to make it because there's going to be some <coughs> that will make it probably, that will make it in, in the end time. We'll make it through, through the tribulation and, and, and be martyred for for not taking the mark of the beast and, and serve God and hold on to God. But it won't be free. It'll be paid at a price. Today it's free to serve the Lord. All the Lord asks us to give him our all. And he'll lead us in guidance. He don't want, he don't want your money. He tells us in the word of God about paying tithes and offerings. He doesn't want the money. He wants us to be obedient. He wants our obedience to him. He doesn't want your, your vehicle or your hobbies or your uh, things that you like to do. He doesn't want that. He wants you. He wants me. He loves us. He loves us. The Word of God didn't say that he loved the animals so much they sent a son. He didn't say that he loved uh, uh, the, the plants on the earth so much. He said, no, he loved the world. He loved man. He loved you and I so much that he sent a son. He loved us enough that he sent his own begotten son so we could be saved. You see, he's, he's coming quick. Quick. It's going to be in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. That's fast, church. That's fast. He's coming back in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. We've got to be ready. We've got to be ready. You see, people will always be people. And people will always make choices. People can go and people can stay. When you, when you go somewhere, maybe when you go to a restaurant, maybe when you go to a friend's house or, or a family member's house for a birthday party or something, you stay there as long as you want to, or when you get ready to go, you get up and leave. Well, that's the way it is with serving God. We can serve God or we can not. We can go to heaven or we can stay behind. It's totally your choice. It's totally my choice. But you already know my choice. My choice is I'm going to heaven. And I, I'm going to carry people with me. You know, you know why? Because I love God and I want to preach His message and I want to teach His message. I want to share with people how He loves Him. And I want people to go to heaven. I want people to go. Hallelujah. Do we hear? Do we hear these warnings and let them really sink in? You know, the warning signs, the warning blinkers and, and sounds have went off. You know, I'm sure all of you at some point have heard an alarm system go off, whether it be for residents whether it be a car alarm, whether it be at a store, you've heard an alarm go off. Something like that, maybe lights flashing and things of that nature. You heard that. That warned you something was taking place. I mean, maybe it was, maybe it was an accidental activation. You know, maybe it was, 
something accident, but you heard that warning. You heard that. Well, that's what's been going on for years and years and years since Jesus gave his life on Calvary. Since the church has started moving forward, the alarm has been sounded. Sound the alarm. The alarm has been sounded. The blinkers have been flashing. People have been preaching. People have been singing. People have been teaching about the coming of the Lord and about people need to repent and be saved, just like Paul preached, just like Peter preached. Repent and be saved. Repent and be saved. Those, all those that will repent can be saved, washed in the blood of the Lamb, for years and years and years and years preached and taught about or sung about. The warning signs have been going. The alarms have been blaring. But have you been listening? Have you been heeding these alarms, these warning signs? If you've been listening and heeding, that means you're living right and doing for God. But if you haven't been heeding or listening, that means if the Lord was to come back right now, you might not go. If you're not living right and not doing right and came back right now, you wouldn't go. If you have sin in your life, if you fail God and you've not been doing what He would tell you to do, and you've been rebellious and you have not repented for those things, you will not go. But He gives us opportunity. Tonight He sent me by this way with this simple, simple message. An eternal love letter. One that will last through eternity. One that, one that won't be lost, thrown away, torn up, or burned down because it's in your heart and in your mind. You see, we hear these warnings. We hear these warnings. But are we listening to them? It's one thing to hear. It's another thing to listen. One thing to hear. Another thing to listen. You know, when they come around with the tornado watchers and warnings, and you hear that along on your phone call, or you hear that along on the radio or on the TV, Storm, storm approaching, storm approaching. You can sit there on the couch or wherever you are and watch it. Watch on that, 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 that screen where it shows it moving across the land. And you can see that storm coming. You hear the rain outside. You hear the thunder. You hear the lightning. And you hear the roaring of the wind, the howling of the wind. And you can sit there on that couch or in that chair and do nothing. You heard the warning. And then when that wind or that storm comes by and the power goes out and the house's roof is torn off and you begin to say, well, I didn't think that would happen. You had the warning, but you didn't need the warning. Heeding the warning would have meant going high in a place that was secure and safe for you. Even if the roof was torn off, even if the walls were crumbled down, you would be safe because you'd be hiding in that closet or that basement or in that, if you're outside in that ditch. We all know those, uh, the, the things to do with tornadoes and different things are coming. You see, there's a difference in hearing the warning and heeding the warning. Tonight I come with a warning. This love letter will last. And he told us about how it was created in the beginning, how he loved us enough. Then he sent his only begotten son. Then he's warning us and telling us that Jesus is coming back. We better be ready because he's coming at a time when we don't know. No man knows the day of the hour, only the Father. And I can tell you something tonight, church. One day soon, the Father's going to send the Son and say, Go bring my children home. Go bring my children home. And I'm going. And I want you to go. So tonight, I ask you, I ask you, won't you be part of the church that goes? Maybe you've been a Christian for ever how many years? Maybe you go to church every week, three times a week. Maybe maybe revivals around. You go every night. Maybe, maybe you do. It doesn't matter how many times that you've been to church or how many times that you went to revival. What matters is what's the condition of your heart. It's either ready or it's not. So I ask you tonight when we pray, in just a moment when we pray, if you feel that little tingling, I'm going to make this for everybody. If you feel that little tingling in your heart, that kind of, you got a little uneasy feeling, that's, that's the Spirit of God coming out from this Word tonight, drawing you, saying, all you have to do is repent. And you see, all, 
as simple as this. There's nothing hard or tricky about it. All you have to say is, Lord, I'm sorry. I feel like I've done wrong. I feel like I failed you. I, I, whatever the case, Lord, please forgive me. Help me to be part of the church that goes when Jesus comes back, when you come back, Lord. Help me to be washed in the fresh blood of the Lamb at all times. Help me to be ready at all times. Help me to be prepared and know that I'm saved to the uttermost. And you know what? He'll wrap his love on the ground and he'll forgive you. And he'll set your feet back on the solid rock and you'll be doing what you need to do for the glory of God. Boy, you never get to a place to where we sit back and say, well, I'm saved and I'm satisfied and nothing's wrong. I don't, I don't. And when we know that things haven't been like maybe they used to be or things ain't like when I first got saved. Because you see, we should be grown, grown more from when we got saved to today. We can't regress, can't go backwards. We have to be doing better. We should be just as excited today or more positive excited as when you got saved. Hallelujah. On fire for God. God's done so much for us. So I ask you tonight, won't you take a moment, examine your life. You, you, you may be listening tonight and or, or whenever you listen to this or watch this and you've been saved forever how long. But something in your heart is stirred from this message. From this word that I've read you tonight. Straight from the word of God. And all you got to do is say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm not saying that you've sinned. I'm not saying that, you, that you've done something horrible. I'm saying that if you feel like you're not exactly where you need to be with God, change that tonight. Change that. Let God forgive you. Forgiveness is not just for sin. Forgiveness is for anything that, that is getting in the way or hindering our relationship with Christ. That's, that, that's all it is. When we repent, it don't mean you've done something terrible, terrible and horrible and, 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 and already sinned. But it could be just a mistake or a failure that hasn't turned into sin because you're feeling that pricking of your heart now. And you just got to say, Lord, I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize what I'd done. I'm sorry for it. God's pricking your heart right now. I feel his presence so strong. God's pricking your heart. God's pricking your heart. He loves you. He loves you so much that he had this whole word of God wrote just for you and I. Just for you and I. So we can live in these last days waiting on the coming of the Lord. Jesus is coming soon, ready or not. He's coming. Won't you pray with me? Heavenly Father, come before you right now. We love you. We praise you. Thank you for this message tonight. Lord, it stirred me. Lord, I feel your presence. I know that you're drawing hearts. I know that you're convicting people right now. And I know that you'll convict people that what, whenever they're watching, Lord. Lord, it not necessarily has, has, has everybody sinned and, and just done some horrible thing. But God, I believe you brought this message tonight to let us know that sometimes just that little failure can, can pull us away from our relationship with you. Sometimes that little, just that little uh, uh, undesirable thing can draw us from the relationship with you that we need. Not necessarily sin in itself, but that, but that undesirable thing. But Lord, we need to make sure everything's right. Lord, we don't want to be left behind. We want to go to heaven. You're so coming king. You're coming in an hour that people think not. You're coming in a moment of twinkling on an hour. You're coming uh, soon. Lord, uh, day, people are going to be <clears throat> doing things like the days of Noah. That's going on in today's time, 2020. It's just like in the Bible when Noah uh, was building the ark. It was going on, people eating and drinking and being married. People doing what they want to do. But God, I know you're soon coming. I know you, Heavenly Father, I know you will soon send your only begotten Son back to, back to this earth to bring us home. Lord, he's he going to prepare a place for us. And Lord, we know that the, the place is prepared. And, and as soon as you want him to come and get the church and the bride of Christ, bring us home. You're going to do that, Lord. I just ask you, touch each and every one right now, Lord, that feels that freaking that feels that, that drawing right now in their heart. Help them, the Lord, to just, just know that all they got to do is repent. Ask you for forgiveness, and you'll forgive them. You'll love them. You'll come into their life and change them around, and you'll change everything that they do, everything they say. You'll, you'll come into their life and be with them forever and ever and ever. Do things for them. Lord, you wrote us a, uh, a love letter. Lord, you showed us how much you cared because you wrote about us being created in the beginning. You wrote about how you sent your only son as a sacrifice for us. He was without sin, and we were with sin. Sin, but you sent your sinless 
son, hallelujah, to give his life on Calvary for us. And then you shared with us that he's a soon coming king, that he's coming back for those that are ready, those that are not ready to be left behind. Lord, help us to be ready at all times. Help us to know that you're soon coming. God, I ask you to touch everybody that views this or listens to this at any time. Lord, let your fire and your conviction, your anointing flow forth and go forth and go out and let people know that they can they can be ready for your coming because you're soon coming. We'll give you glory and honor and worship and praise. Be with everybody. Keep them safe. Watch over them. Touch all those that are sick. Help us to live right. Help us to live righteous, holy, and without spot, blemish, or wrinkle. Help us to live set apart. Help us to do your will. In Jesus' holy, wonderful name we pray. Amen. Thank you for staying tuned. Thank you for listening. Thank you for all that you do. Make sure you share this with someone. Let someone else out there hear this. Even if it's someone that don't go to church uh, that you work with, share this with them on their Facebook or, or, or let them hear it or see it. Let them know that Jesus is coming soon and Jesus cares about them. We love you and we, we love you and we care about you. Anything I can do, please call upon me. Jesus loves you. Pastor David loves you as well. God bless you. Good night.